All right, we're going to get into Pep, as I said, but I want to stick with uh, Arsenal a little bit. I think we disagree. I, I thought in the second half, I know they, 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 they had the odd chance, but I thought that's when City really turned oh, it yeah, on. For and sure. they really City had trouble establishing yeah. themselves compared yeah, to the first half when they came out with so much confidence. I think at one point they had like, I think it was like 25 minutes in, they had 60% possession against City. So it looked and like they, they finished had, again with 64%, the whole game. Right, but that's when they were coming back, right? But like, yeah, but like, uh, you it, know. it felt like that confidence that was there. Did, did, did you sense it going away in the second half, or was it just the mistakes or just like a kick in the privates? No, no, I, I just thought the second half, when City changed the, the shape and the formation, when Akanji came on for Mares, that changed the game really. And I thought it, it felt to me that Pep knew that Arsenal could not keep that intensity for 90 minutes. So in the last half hour of the game, you press in a more aggressive way. If you're City, you box Arsenal in and Arsenal struggled to get the ball back out. And yeah, there's the chance for, for Nketiah, there's the, the other header, but, but City also had chances and they were, you could tell the Grealish goal was coming, I felt. Because, because I think City reacted really well in the second half and put Arsenal under so much pressure. Also because I think Arsenal lacks sharpness and because they, they've been playing so many games because Arteta doesn't change the starting eleven, because they don't have the same depth that City have, for example. We've talked about the depth um, on my way over here. I, I, I took the bus here this morning. Nice. And we passed this big construction site where, where my mate works, who's a big Arsenal fan, and we always chit-chat. And he's very down on Nketiah. Yeah, he came back to something that he said, like, how do you not spend money on a center forward? Because maybe Nketiah, yeah, I know people are going to build, pull, point out the fact he scored nine goals and blah, blah, blah starts. But he said Nketiah yeah, was, was the point that this guy said, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. He said they should have signed Tammy Abraham. I'm like, yeah, I think Tammy Abraham, probably out of their, um, you know, out of their budget. But did they miss a trick there? I know, I know, I know. We're second guessing, but is that yeah. is, is that the move? But if you give if you give Enketia a new deal last summer, then you you believe in him and you trust him and you believe in him as a backup center forward. Exactly, but then injuries happen. You're not going to buy a new player every time there's a, a player injured. So you know, so I yeah, of course, no, of course, he should have done better in that game against already against Brentford. There were signs that he looked tired, uh, but maybe after not playing much at all until the Gabriel Jesus injury, so until the World Cup. Well rested. No, no, but it's not that. But then, then when you play every three days yeah. for two months, then maybe at some point, I, I don't you, know. It's really difficult, I think. It's not, it's not a fitness thing. It's a question of a mental sharpness. It's a mm. question of routine. It's a question yeah. of rhythm. We hear this all the time, right? I mean, he went, he plays every minute of every game and he never played before. Like that, that is yeah, an adjustment. No, and I think too often we don't, we don't recognize this. I, I wonder if in some games, again, hindsight's always 2020, Mikel, mm. but hey, that's what we do. Monday no, morning but quarterback. No, but I, I wonder if maybe he shouldn't have tried Martinelli through the middle. Not necessarily in this game, no, no, but no, in no, other games, just to give us some variance, yeah. just to give him... Just, just, just to give Nketiah um, maybe more of a yeah, more of a breather. Would you make a Georgie in his first big game? I like Jorginho. As you know, I'm a big fan. Uh, I think he always showed for the ball. I think he, he showed tiredness in the second half, and rightly so again, I think. Um, and <clears throat> But he doesn't have the physical impact that party can have in the challenges, okay? But when you have 64% of the ball, I think he's very important to just link up everything and I think he did that well but he's, he, this is all new to him he also needs a bit of time to yeah. get to know but I like the way that he talked to everybody I like the leadership I think again I think it's a good signing but this is a this is a tough game to to make you your first are dropped start. in there and I think also the teammates need to get used to him because yeah. I'm not sure Arsenal would have had that much possession if Thomas Partey had been in there it just would have been it's a true. different yeah, yeah, yeah a different way of playing um the individual mistakes all right, the Zinchenko one, the, the, the Tomoyasu one, I can understand, right? I, I'm not justifying it. He's a professional. I should know better. But, you know, he mishits a pass, essentially, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not even sure he, miss, he, he mishit the pass. He makes a bad decision. Yeah, but he the made Zinchenko, the same decision a few minutes before. I, on that one, the De Bruyne goal, I thought, there's not many players in the world who would get there think, I'm just going to dink this first time over the goalkeeper because it's not it's not the safe option, right? You know Ramsdale's rushing out. You know the, the logical thing to do. I mean, you played at a higher level than I did. 
is take a touch and, so and then, bury then you it. go really wide. He's De Bruyne. It doesn't know, matter how wide he is. He could score an Olympic goal every time he wants to. No, but then, just but then yeah, he's... No, possibly. But can you just... But then it's not an obvious decision to do what he did. Ma, ma, I don't know. I disagree. I think he was doing... I think, I, think I think he's obvious. The ball is there. He's dropping in front of him so well. And I know Ramsdale is there and he's on his left foot. But I think if he takes a touch, he goes even wider. The defenders are coming back. Then he... Then he has to probably cross. I don't think he can shoot from how wide it was. So, I, no, I thought he was... He could have taken a touch inside. But it's still an amazing finish. It's, a, it's, it's a ridiculous finish. And ridiculous. Weirdly, when I saw it again, I'm not even sure he hit it as cleanly as, no, as he would not. have. I agree. I saw um, it too. But yeah. what a player. Okay. <laughs> and then even the assist, everything that he did in that game, uh, when, you, when you sort of recenter him a bit like that, when he plays so high next to Haaland, I think that works and it gives you so much energy. The... The Gabriel mistake, which led to the, the, the Grealish goal. I mean, mm. there's still a little bit for them to do with, with the three passes. That, I take that in tandem with the one which, where they got the penalty in the first half and then it was overturned yeah. because Holland was offside because obviously they don't know he's offside at the time. You're still in the first half. You know that if you put, I mean, and obviously they were both pulling each other. That is a huge gamble to take. I'm not, I'm not suggesting, you know, you a foul starts outside the box. Why don't you start bodying him like that? If Holland goes down, yeah, you, you're, you're, you're at risk of either a penalty or a red card, right? It's really clumsy from Gabriel. It's not the first time. Neither is the mistake that, that leads to the second City goal. I know he's a ball playing kind of centre back, this, and this is what they ask him to do. And the high line, all of that. I just think that sometimes he loses a little bit of focus. And and you again, it's okay if you play against a, a, a team not as big as City. But against City, losing a ball like like Gabriel did on the halfway line, pretty much, then then it's gonna it's gonna be converted into a chance and potentially a goal. And there's there's not many ways to beat City, a, a Guardiola City team. You need a bit of luck, maybe. Or you need to have just a perfect game. It, it being perfect is su being super clinical in the one chance or maybe the two chances that you have. And then defensively, have almost a perfect game and hoping that they are li a little bit off. Like, let's say like Spurs two weeks ago, for example. Just ask them when not like that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.